Hey everyone, uh, this is the uh, Highlander Wrestling Show, finally getting back with you. Hope everybody had a great Christmas and a Happy New Year's. And uh, sorry about it taking so long out there to make my new video, but I had some things come up and well y'all know how that goes. Uh, this uh, segment of this year, the first show for 2020 of this year is going to be about the managers of wrestling um and before i get started uh i like to show off a few new items i've gotten uh this right here is one i've been very proud of the american the, the american made hook hogan one of my all-time favorite i got it from ringside collectible Oh, uh, it was not cheap, but I mean, it was still worth it. Very good. I kept it in the box, of course. That's what I do mostly with my stuff. I try to, anyway. And uh, I, the last time I showed y'all the what I got, I got a Nick Bob Winkle. It was when, uh, back in the 80s, um, they made cards. It was a wrestling all-star cards. I've been trying to get a bunch of them in. But I got my new one in yesterday. Of one of the very first World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion. The Nature Boy Buddy Rogers. The true Nature Boy. The real one. The one that invented the figure four leg lock. Uh, he was the only, He was the first man to hold the NWA and World Wide Wrestling Federation Heavyweight title. Uh, I got something else which is coming to me here in just a minute. I got thought was very cool very original i've been getting a lot of autograph cards in um but uh but anyway why i'm waiting on it to come to me <laughs> uh this coming up march uh try i gotta go back and look again because i'm going to announce it again the battle zone championship wrestling in raleigh mississippi uh they're going to bring al snow and tom pritchard and and um, horn swoggle uh, to the to Mississippi, so I'm gonna go and see that. And uh, I think the king of wrestling broadcast is gonna be there. And uh, as far as I know, my good friend uh, Ultimo Gallows is gonna be there too. Y'all know his weekly wrestling show, which is always fun to watch and everything. But uh, anyway, finally got it. Just got it. Um, I finally got one of these. It's an autographed Sasha Banks. Of course, I put it in a little sleeve so it'd be protected. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get to the point on uh, my show. All right. Now, the wrestling manager I'm going to be talking about are through the past and present, or well, mostly from the past because, you know, you don't really see managers that much anymore. Um, I'm going to be talking about guys, of course, Bobby the Brain Heenan or the Weasel. Uh, we're going to talk about Captain Louis Albano, Miss Elizabeth, uh, Sensational Sherry, uh, Paul Bear, Mr. Fuji, Jimmy Hart, Johnny Valiant, the Wizard, uh, Freddy, Classy Freddy Blassie, the fashion plate of the wrestling. Uh, Slickster, Reverend Slick now, but he was called the Slickster, uh, and Sonny. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start with the one I first started with. Bobby the Brain Heenan. Uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan made his wrestling debut in the AWA. He was managing uh, Nick Bob Winkle, which... Nick Bob Winkle was the first addition to the Weasel family, which all y'all wrestling fans and new and old that's watched this video knows who I'm talking what I'm talking about, the Weasel, the Heenan family. But anyway, uh but yeah, Nick Bob Winkle was the very first uh person to be in into the the, uh, the Heenan family. And of course, Bobby the Brain Heenan, you know, he went through AWA and he managed, uh, I think, yeah, I believe, 
I believe he managed big. No, 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 no. He managed. I think he just managed Big John Sudden, the World Wrestling Federation. He just was friends with Big John Sudden, the AWA. I could be wrong, but and uh, he was a. Uh, of course, he was a broadcaster. Uh, he had his own show on uh, TV, I, and uh, it was called the Heenan Show, where he, you know, he had. Uh, I don't know what that old guy's name is now was the first uh, person to be on his show and everything. And he always had, he had the heavy set women come on there, and it was it was a lot of fun watching. I mean, you know, it was it was your original Heenan, uh, Bobby, yeah, Bobby the Brain Heenan. He uh, went on to have, of course, on his Heenan family, he had. Uh, Ravishing Rick Rude, uh, Hercules, uh, Haku, Andre, uh, King Kong Bundy, Big John Stud. I mean, it was. I mean, there's. I know there's a few more that that slipped my mind, but yeah. But by the brain, Heenan was a. He was a one of a kind manager, one of the greatest managers of all time. Oh, uh, like I said, I should say the one of the best managers of all time. But he was a, uh, he'll be sorely missed. You know, he passed away and uh, lost the, one of the, the big names in the business. I mean, he was, uh, he was fun to watch. Him and Gorilla Monsoon were fun to watch together because they were best friends in real life. And they could just, you know, you they, they, they went together perfectly. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next one. Um, let's see. Captain Louis Albano. Good one. Captain Louis Albano has to be the number one greatest manager of all time because he's he's managed 15 champions. He's managed uh, the Wild Samoans. He managed the British Bulldogs. Uh, let's see. I think... He managed uh, Mr. Fuji and Mr. Saito, I think is how you say his name. Or And when he wasn't in the picture, you had Professor Tanaka, who was in a lot of movies y'all might have seen. He was in uh, An Eye for an Eye. He was in the, three, the movie Three Ninjas. He made a, a special view in... Um, or he made a special scene in uh, Last Action Heroes. He was in The Running Man. Anyway, he was a he was a very oh Captain Lewis Albano was a unique man. He was the the voice of the Mario Mario on the Mario Brothers Super Show. He played in the live action part of it. Uh, Captain Lewis Albano was a big part of the eighties with the rubber bands in his beard, you know, and he was in. He made a cartoon of him. He was in two cartoons back then: the Super Mario Brothers Super Show and the Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling cartoon. Oh, uh, Captain Lewis Albano was. You either loved him or you hated him. You know, he was your slob. You know, of course, for reason, one reason why I always thought he was cool because he was so unusual. Oh, uh, but yeah, Captain Lewis Albano. He uh. I know he was in the video of, well, actually he was in two videos, I want to say. He was in Cindy Lopper's uh, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, and he was in Goonies Are Enough. Of course, well, along with other WWF superstars. Um, but yeah, Captain Lewis Albano will always be the top number one greatest manager of all time for the fact that he managed 15 champions. World Tag Team Champions, Intercontinental Champions, and uh, he even walked out with Hulk Hogan a few times as a World Heavyweight Champion. Um, but anyway, let me go on to the next to the next one. I can keep going on and on and on. So, um, let's see, Miss Elizabeth. That's another good one. She she wasn't the first lady manager at the time, but she was the the real first lady of wrestling because she didn't really get involved where Sensational Sherry or Sunshine or any of them or a woman got involved in the matches. She kind of, she just kind of sat out there and supported, which made her the first lady 
of the World of Wrestling, of the World Wrestling Federation, excuse me, or Pro Wrestling, whatever you want to call it, I mean, in any way you want to put it, but anyway. She managed the Macho Man for a good many years. They were married. Uh, they, I don't think they ever had no kids. I don't believe they did. Uh, she was. She has sadly passed away due for drugs, or excuse me, I ain't going to go into that. I, excuse me for saying so. But anyway, she was a, uh, a very, she'll be very sadly missed because she was really good for the business. She was the, a true, very kind from what I've heard people say, she's very kind and, you know, generous and everything. Love to, to talk with fans and everything. She, uh, sadly, her and the Macho Man are both passed away now. But, yes, yeah, she, uh, she had a lot of good uh, memories on, of, in wrestling, you know, for a lot of fans and stuff. So, that's, you know... I didn't. I don't know where all to go to with her, so you know, I just mentioned her in my video on that one because she was one of the greats. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go on with uh, Classy Freddie Blassie. <laughs> now, Classy Freddie Blassie is a unique individual. I'm gonna talk about. He was a pro wrestler back in the '30s. Well, actually, I want to say it might have even been maybe 1928. When he first started, he was very young when he got started. He was like only 16 or 17 years old. Uh, he was, they call him the fashion plate. He had a lot of, you know, back then the wrestling wasn't even what it is today because it was still being uh, formed over here in the United States. It was big in Europe and Asia and all that back then. But over here, we were pretty much getting into the, the the it took a long time for it to take effect here in the United States uh he was a uh, he was a manager too he managed uh, the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov he managed Hogan when he first aired in the World Wrestling Federation uh, he's managed uh let's see I know I'm forgetting somebody else that he's managed but yeah, he's he's been he's been he was a he was a very well just person for you to have out because he could do a lot of talking, get the fans riled up, and you know that's what he used to tell Hogan. You know, you just be the bronze, let me I'll do all the the talking and all that. You just get out there and do what you you know. Be be the be the muscle and let me do the I will do all that part so you know you won't have to worry about that. And uh classy Freddie Blassie, he uh I don't know when he actually officially retired. I wanna say maybe somewhere after WrestleMania two, I wanna say he retired. Because you didn't really see that much of him at WrestleMania even at WrestleMania three he never did show up. Um but yeah, he was a very um, he liked to use, he liked to have his cane out there to to whop the other wrestlers with when the guys his guys to whop the other wrestlers and cheat and win. But anyway, um, let's see, Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fuji is another uh, crafty manager, along with Classy Freddie Blast and Captain Lewis Albano and all of them. Mr. Fuji managed uh, Don the Magnificent Morocco, or Mag Magnificent Don Morocco, excuse me. And uh, Mr. Fuji was a very great pro wrestler. He 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 was managed by uh, Captain Louis Albano at one time back in the seventies. Uh, Mr. Fuji, he was he was uh, he was what I call the at that time strong style wrestler. You know, he was a very uh, crafty Japanese-style wrestler. A lot of people may find it being boring because it was back in the, the 70s and the early 80s, but he was a very, uh, he was very good for his period of time when he was younger. Uh, Mr. Fuji also managed the Warlord and the Barbarian, the Towers of Pain. 
Uh, he managed Devolution. He's managed, uh, let's see. I know he's managed some other ones. Like I said, I've, my mind's going blank on that one. I just named some of the ones that are more famous. But anyway, Mr. Fuji, he was at WrestleMania 1. He was at WrestleMania 2. He was even at WrestleMania 3, and I think he was also at WrestleMania 4. He was in a lot of the WrestleMania Survivor Series and Royal Rumbles and everything. He always wore, <laughs> I call it the penguin tuxedo and the little derby hat, you know. You know, very, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, ba you're basically stereotype Japanese look here for America. Uh, Mr. Fuji, he was a he was a blast to watch. I mean, you know, you you couldn't help but laugh at him because of how he talked and what he did and everything. Because even though he was considered the hill, you got it. You he was fun to watch. Uh, Mr. Fuji, he's passed on. Oh yeah, Yokozuna. I knew I was forgetting somebody. He he managed Yokozuna and the Oriental Express, which was another great tag team, Japanese tag team. Oh. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Fuji, uh, he was he 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 was he was uh, he was one of the greats. Oh, uh, but anyway, let me go on down here. Uh, Sensational Sherry. Sensational Sherry also was in the AWA. She was in the WCW, uh, WWF. Uh, I don't know if she ever made it to Mid South or not. I'm not 100% sure. I know she showed up in ECW and I believe Smoky Mountain Wrestling, if I'm not mistaken. She's managed, uh, I'm trying to remember what that, that team was called now. It was on the AWA DVD. It was, oh, uh, I remember Playboy Buddy Rose was one of them and I think Beautiful Bobby, I believe, something, I think that was his name. She managed them in the AWA. Uh, she's managed the Macho Man, Randy Savage. She's managed uh, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. She's managed... Uh, I think she was a manager for Marty Jannetty for a short period. Uh, she managed Shawn Michaels, uh, before I forget. Uh, in the WCW, I remember they said she managed Harlem Heat. Not too sure about her W. I'm not too sure about her WCW career because I wasn't a WCW fan, as all a lot of y'all out there already know. Uh, yes, yeah, she was a and she was an accomplished woman's wrestler too. She was WWF Women's Heavyweight Champion for maybe twice. I want to say. Uh, she beat Rock and Robin for the the ladies title. Uh, who was Jake the Snake Roberts' sister, or half-sister, I'm going to say. But, uh, anyway. But, yeah, she was a very, uh, she would be sorely missed, too. And she was a, uh, a great female manager. Uh, oh, yeah. I can't believe I ain't already put him in there before I did the other ones. Uh, the one and only Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. The most annoyingest manager to ever grace wrestling. You got to love him now, but back then, you want to strangle him. Uh, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Hart, uh, he, was such, he was such a small man compared to the other pro wrestlers that he ran his mouth to that he ought to know what, what they was going to do for him. He started ringing a stomp a mud hole in him and walk him dry with no problem without even breaking a sweat. Uh, Jimmy Hart was a great manager. He was along with, um, you know, I put him in second place with uh, Captain Lewis Albano as far as greats. Um, he's managed, uh, let's see, Greg the Hammer Valentine. He's managed uh, the Hart Foundation. He's managed uh, the Nasty Boys, uh, the National the National Disasters, uh, Earthquake and Typhoon. Uh, if y'all didn't know who the National Disasters were, uh, Let's see. He's managed. Uh, he managed Hulk Hogan and uh, the 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 Mega Powers. No, excuse me, not the Mega Powers. Uh, what was Hulk Hogan and Birdie's Beefcake's tag team called? 
Anyway, he uh, Jimmy Hart, he managed them at WrestleMania 9 to go against uh, Ted DiBiase and IRS, the Mega Bucks. Um, Jimmy Hart, he was also on the House of Legends, which was a great show for the WWE Network. Uh, he was in WCW, you know, after he left WWF along with why they jumped ships is beyond me, regardless for the other money. Uh, that was a poorly run show, in my opinion, WCW. Uh, but anyway, Jimmy Hart, yeah, he was uh, some of my fondest memories of Jimmy Hart on TV <laughs> is when uh, he went on uh, Piper's Pit. And he was bringing out, you know, he was telling him that Cowboy Bob Orton and Mr. Fuji and Don Morocco and all them brought him some gifts, gave them to Jimmy Hart to give to uh, Rowdy Piper. They gave, you know, they got him a crutch and one of the Hawaiian lays and Mr. Fuji got him some, some they, they were basically women's underwear. They was like plaid. And which was very insulting, in my opinion. Um, then they got him a pink cowboy hat, trying to make him out to be a sissy, you know, which Roddy Piper was not no sissy. He was one of the toughest men in the business. Um, but anyway, he, uh, after all that was said and done, he tied down Jimmy Hart and washed his mouth out with mouthwash, which was, that was just priceless. That was just hilarious. Um, but anyway... Uh, let me go on to the next uh, manager. Uh, the Wizard. I don't remember the Wizard that... I don't remember the Wizard because he basically died and wasn't in the... You know, he wasn't around. He passed away before I started... I ever thought about watching wrestling. Uh, the, he was called the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. Now, he wore the turban. He had the big sunglasses. He was a flashy and... And, you know showy and everything you know he, he you know he complimented the, some of the a lot of the wrestlers like his biggest man the one that he managed the most that made the biggest impact on he fit perfectly was with superstar billy graham uh the grand wizard was a little bitty man you know he I, you know i've heard a lot of things i'm not gonna go into detail because i messed up a while ago and i don't want to you know that the I didn't completely mess up, just saying. I ain't gonna go to that route on here. Um, the Grand Wizard, you know, he was he was one of the, the from what I've seen of him on WWE Network and what I've seen of him in other WWF uh, tapes and stuff, he was a great manager. Uh, he wasn't as he was he wasn't a Jimmy Hart or a Captain Lewis Albano or anything like that. He was just flashy. But kept uh but the uh, yeah uh, the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. Uh, I'm supposed to be trying to get one of his uh, wrestling all star cards here before too long. Uh, he was a uh, he was a very you know he had a very unique look to him. I mean he it was he was interesting to see. He was something you never expect. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go on down to the next, uh, Luscious Johnny Valiant. Now, Johnny Valiant had a tag team with, uh, well, a lot of y'all, I might remember him as the Boogie Woogie Man from the NWA, Jimmy Valiant. Uh, they were a tag team and won, uh, tag team titles in WWF and the AWA and, I think Memphis and I can't remember who it were else. The NWA and everything else. Uh, but yeah, John, uh, Luscious Johnny Valiant. He's managed. He managed uh, the Dream Team of uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake and uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Uh, he's uh, managed. He's managed a countless a bunch. You know, I mean, he was. Luscious Johnny Valiant was what you call your big mouth manager. He talked tough and he would back it up until it depended on who who was he talking to. You know, like Bruno, Bruno San Martino at WrestleMania 1, Bruno put him in his place. Of course, Bruno San Martino is a true living legend. 
the in my consider in my opinion the greatest world heavyweight champion of all time though simply for the fact of he could wrestle he could brawl he could do everything but anyway I'm gonna get back to Johnny Valiant uh, or excuse me luscious Johnny Valiant luscious Johnny Valiant he was he was unique out of the out of the managers I mean he was he was a loud mouth you know of course he was supposed to be the tough guy he talked big and then he tried to back it up and it didn't work in his favor Johnny Valiant was a uh, was a great addition for the WWE Hall of Fame and for any fan out there, you know, if you like me, you like, I like going back to the history and peeling back the layers and learning where this came from, how this got started and everything, which is, is very interesting. I love it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me go on down to the next one. Uh, the Slickster, the Reverend, Reverend Slick. I, I don't know if I already talked about him or not. No. Uh, <laughs> Re, uh, the Slickster. The Doctor Style. The Pimp. Now the Reverend. Uh, he... <laughs> He's managed. Uh, he's managed the big boss man. He's managed the one man game. Um, he's managed Kamala. I mean, he was the slickster. Was actually what's the best word to put that is put the slickster in. He was a one of a kind. That's all I can say. That's the best way. He was a one of a kind man in the business. He, he could talk, he talked slick, he looked slick, and he, and he acted slick. But he never could have slicked right through Hulk Hogan's fingers when Hogan got a hold of him or anybody else. He just, he couldn't slick his way through that. Um, matter of fact, he got awful sticky. <laughs> I'm trying to put some humor in here, folks. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, the Slickster, yeah, the Slickster... Like I said, he's a, he's a reverend now. He kind of he uh, he was on uh, I believe it was Monday Night Raw. It might have been Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. But he may he supposedly, from what I understood, he married uh, best to my knowledge. I put it like that. He married CM Punk and AJ. Si oh, excuse me, AJ Lee. Why I said AJ Styles, I meant AJ Lee. I'm sorry, AJ Styles. <laughs> Uh, anyway, but yeah, he, he supposedly had married CM Punk and AJ Lee. Got it. Perfect. Over. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, the Slickster, yeah, he was always, uh, meddling. He stuck his nose where his nose shouldn't have been, especially when the Slickster, when he was managing Big Boss Man, they tried to handcuff Hogan to the ropes. That didn't work out too good. Um, uh, Slickster, Slick, Slickster got, he, he got slick, all right, he slicked right down that, to that mat when Hogan got a hold of him, but anyway, I'm getting down to the next one, um, the, oh yeah, Sonny, or Tammy Lynn Cinch, now Sonny was, she came around at the right moment, she was the original diva of the World Wrestling Entertainment. She managed her husband, her real life husband, uh, Chris Candino, and Tom Pritchter. I think it's how you say his last name was. It was uh, Skip and Zip, I believe is what they how they was called, the Body Diners. Oh, uh, and Sonny has also managed uh, Farouk, as best known as Ron Simmons. Uh, she's managed uh, the Smoking Guns, the the uh, the God ones. She's managed uh, she's managed a lot of big names, but she's she's been in the WWF and ECW. She went to WCW, but she didn't make it too good in WCW, as far as I always was heard. But her ECW and WWF was her top. Uh, moments because that's when she was at her best. Oh, uh, she's she deserved to be in the women's hall of fame. I've heard she even sold her 
Hall of Fame ring for some odd reason. I try to be friends with her on Facebook, but she never really uh, acknowledged me that much when I try to talk with her. Uh, but, you know, that's all right. Uh, she's her and I'm me, so... But anyway, she's uh, but she was always one of my favorite female uh, managers, along with Francine, which I'm gonna talk about Francine before I, I, I call this video off. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to this, the next one. Uh, it wasn't on my list, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Uh, Francine, the Queen of Extreme. Now she was, she was a tough woman. Uh, she could. She would. Uh, she managed the Pit Bulls. She's managed uh, Tommy Dreamer. She managed Raven for a period of time. She managed uh, Justin Incredible. Uh, she was. She was one that would get in there and fight with the men. She would. She would interfere and she'll fight dirty. Use high heels and all that kind of stuff. She was. She was tough. But uh. Anyway, I guess that's all I'm going to be able to talk about right now. But uh, before I wrap this video up, make sure y'all watch. Uh, I'm going to try to get this as a weekly show. This is Saturday. And I'm going to try to do this every Saturday. Is what I'm going to do. Oh, excuse me. i just been informed this is Friday, not Saturday. Oh. Uh, I'm going to try to do this every Friday. And, uh, so y'all watch out for my videos. Hopefully you fans ain't got tired of waiting on my next video. And, uh, be sure to watch Ultimo Gallo's Weekly Wrestling Wrap-Up. Uh, watch King of, uh, Wrestling Podcasts. Uh, if y'all in the Mississippi area, look out for Battle Zone Championship Wrestling, SWA Wrestling, and uh, y'all keep up watching pro wrestling. You have any questions or want to leave me a message on here? Be sure to do that. And I'll see y'all next time, next Friday. Hopefully, that's what I'm. That's what I'm shooting for. I'm sorry about how long it took me. So. Y'all have a good one, and thank you very much.